this is going to be a collective energy read for the full moon in Capricorn. I felt very guided to see where the energies are shifting for us and sort of where we need to focus our healing and those type of things. I love that. Um, stone. Okay, so... I have my new um, Anubis Oracle here and my Anubis key card to get us started <clears throat> and so we're going to go ahead and shuffle and get started. I am shooting this on the day of the full moon. The day of the Capricorn full moon, it is, let's see. Wednesday, July 13th. So, on the day of the full moon. Alright. <clears throat> and I've already meditated and called upon Anubis. My newest guide to sort of navigate this reading for us. I'm going to have to move this out of the way. <clears throat> All right, what do we need to know? What does the collective need to know about what these new energies are bringing in for the full moon? What do we need to know about this Capricorn full moon? Happy Capricorn full moon, guys. All right. What do we need to know about our healing? Thank you for allowing me to be the clear channel for source messages. Okay, the first card that we have is number 14, Hathor. Can you see that? It says, Magic, Medicine Woman, and Integration. Wow. So right away, there is this really strong energy of the divine feminine sort of breaking through and realizing her own magical powers, realizing that she can stand in her power, that she can still be strong yet feminine at the same time. It's the energy of helping the collective to alchemize. It's believing in the impossible when right now it seems like, you know, there's no way to move forward. It's believing in the impossible, believing in your own personal magic. It's believing in magic in general. That's funny. I said integration too, didn't I? And I, I totally forgot that I said integration on there. That's amazing. Mm. All right, let's see what else we got. Hold on one second. I think I'm going to move these cards up a bit. There, that way you can see the cards a little bit better. <clears throat> I really hope when I I feel like when I edit this video oops that card flew out that it's gonna cut off some of the sides and make it blurry so I hope not I maybe should have filmed it in a different format all right so we have number seven sacred purpose it's Ooh, I'm going to slaughter some of these names, and I apologize. Um, we have Ta, Nut, Geb, and Anubis. Wow, so this is basically 
the energy of finding your purpose. It's finding your soul mission, finding your purpose. Um, it's number seven. And that's funny because remember when I did my seven, seven video just recently, the energy of seven has been heavy around us, flowing and swirling around us. Um, it's raining outside. It's a very heavy storm. So that's going to be significant. There is a heavy energy also in this card of integration. If you see, there is a sun and there's a moon on here. So again, the energies of integration, light and dark. It's coming into balance with your light and your dark side. It's also energies of sort of blending. One second. Okay, guys. I just realized that I paused my phone at 555. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I definitely don't like that glare. So I hope that doesn't interfere too much. Let me see if I can adjust this. This is all trial and error because I'm just trying this new setup and uh, there's still pretty big glare but that didn't help at all <laughs> all right anyways okay so i wanted to do it like this so that way you guys could see the cards um I probably will still do some videos showing my face, but I right now, um, I really like this this method. That way it takes the pressure off me to, to sort of be in the spotlight all the time. And I can really focus on the message and um, the cards and focus on the energy of the cards. And it makes it a whole lot easier for me to focus my energy and to tune in better when I'm not so focused on you know, your guys' energy alongside with, you know, watching myself in the camera and all of that stuff. It's just a very big distraction. <clears throat> Though I do love connecting with you guys. Um, when I, you know, when I film myself, I feel like, like you guys feel, you know, more connected to me because you can have eye contact with me and sort of feel like I'm in the room with you. But um, we're going to try it like this for a while. And see how it goes okay so let me just adjust this a little bit um so yes we have two different energies of integration also the energy heavy of um collaborating and finding your soul family i know for me i've been every single reading i've been getting i've been getting um soulmate family like finding your soul family um soulmate family well maybe a soulmate <laughs> But it's finding your soul family. <clears throat> so all of that sort of ties in. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw one more card. And then. We're gonna move on. I might read these. Read these from. The book. Just to see if I'm sort of spot on. Right now, I'm just using my intuition, but I feel like if I use the book, you know, that we might be able to see how my, how, you know, good I am at reading the energies. Okay, so we have Nef this number two, the high priestess. Again, so again, we have, didn't we have, this is sort of high priestess energy, Hathor, Hathor, sorry about that, Hathor. Um, this is intuition and mystery. So it's, it's the high priestess. Again, we have the moon, which is heavy energy of going into your subconscious and integrating the things which are hidden to us. You know, it's the things that you very often will see in the dream state and they're sort of coming to light. So basically facing all of your shadows right now and they're they're being pushed to the surface so that you can face them. To me, this right here represents growth, um, which you should give yourselves a round of applause because you have come so far. We have all grown so much and that is not 
something to be taken lightly. This card also reminds you of the Ace of Cups, which comes in the form of a love blessing. So for those of you that are searching for that love to inflame soulmate connection, I feel like this very well, this Capricorn full moon energy could be bringing that in for you as well. All right. So we're going to go ahead and read these cards and see if my intuition is spot on. And then we'll pull three more cards. All right. So number 14, Hathor. Let's see what this has to say. The book has to say. Okay. Beauty permeates the goddess of love and joy, celebration and intoxication. Ooh, very nice. She is the cow goddess of the night sky, who, whose nourishing milk streams forth as the Milky Way. In the lineage of the most ancient grandmother, Neith, who is sometimes depicted as a serpent, who reaches inside of herself to pull out all of creation, an abiding sense of the benevolence of Neith is infused into Hathor, the medicine woman who integrates the light and the dark into a magical blend of higher love and wisdom in her gold and silver chalice of healing. Her medicine resolves inner conflict. Anything lowly in form becomes divine when blended with her love. It's beautiful. She has the power to bring you the sacred marriage within, fostering unconditional love <clears throat> for yourself and for others. When you are healed by Hathor's magic, you experience a peaceful yet powerful infusion of love. When she appears in her Lady of Beasts aspects, all of Earth's creatures feel blessed and safe in her presence and long to be close to her heart. If you have chosen this card, you have an opportunity to drink from Hathor's magical medicine chalice. As you focus on her loving presence, begin to resonate with the essence of the brew she's creating for you, a blend that includes the oppositions in your life. Combined alchemy to transmute into unconditional love. Nice. Feel the healing power of love enter and flow through your being. Problematic situations, struggles, or even strained relationships can be transformed when you integrate Hathor's love. Hathor can also introduce you to your allies and your animal totems. When you pull this card, it's a good time to notice who comes into your conscious awareness. You might even find that a totem appears in your outer physical surroundings over the next few days. Watch for magic so you can engage with it fully. Very nice. All right, so I'm not going to read the other two. I just wanted to, I guess I can skim over it and see, but I think my intuition is pretty spot on. That seemed pretty much like what I was saying, so it's pretty good. Whoops. Hold on, what is going on here? Wow, so Thoth is on here too, it says. It says Thoth on this card right here. It says Thoth is also present as the rainbow serpent who offers the fruit of wisdom and eternal life from the ancient tree. That's amazing. I didn't know that he was on that card as well. Wow. So it says, I just read the, want to read this little section for you. It says, um, pay attention to what is being birthed or created through your thoughts, words. Sorry about the background noise. About what is being birthed or created through your thoughts words, activities, and everyday story because they have the greatest potential for completion and wholeness. Wow. Okay. Very nice. All right. So let's see what the number two has to say. Nephthys. Hold on one second. This rain is really loud. I hope that you guys can hear me. Okay, so I wanted to just skim over this card, Nephthys, and see. It says, Nephthys is an aspect of the triple goddess. I hope you guys can hear me over that rain. She serves as a medium between the worlds. She comes to us in dreams. 
flashes of intuition and visions. Wow, it says along with Isis and Nakbet's mother Mut, Nephthys is an aspect of the triple goddess. She relies upon spirit to direct her in all things, and she holds the mystery teachings of life, death, and rebirth deep within her essence. That's funny because that has been the theme of my life right now. <clears throat> it says, Neph, the mother of Anubis, Nephthys is also the true virgin or the woman unto herself in her manifestation as the high priestess. Listen to this. This is so beautiful. In our shamanic vision experiences, she inspires the seeker as she whispers her secrets into the wind and dances exotically under the starry sky with magnificent serpents winding around her beautiful bronzed arms. Wow. When Nepsis appears, she's working with your third eye and your sense of intuition, which will guide you further into the mysteries and that which is hidden in your subconscious mind. I told you, you can't make it up, guys. I said that which is hidden in your subconscious mind. That's amazing. Those were my exact words. It says, she helps you to see in the dark. If you've drawn this card, be especially attentive to watch for synchronicities. What you think is a coincidence is actually the universe trying to gain your attention. It says when you give yourself over to the magic of Nifthis, Nifth, she doesn't stop at opening your mind's eyes. She also opens your heart. Allow your entire being to thrive as you begin to think, see things in a new way. That's amazing. We're going to pick <clears throat> three more cards from this deck and then we're going to call it a reading that's beautiful okay so the universe is bringing us magic um most of you will be finding your own personal power and your own personal magic um heavy divine feminine energy some of you will be finding your sacred purpose or your soul purpose and the rest of you are having massive integrations of your light and dark and also of your intuition and third eye activations will be much stronger okay so three more cards please spirits and i hope you guys can hear me over this rain it is very very loud rain indeed but very symbolic of the cleansing that we're going through with this full moon okay can we get three more cards please spirit three more cards please okay Hope that shuffling isn't too loud. There's one. Okay, so we have number 16, Wajet, which is the life force energy, purification, and divine awakener. So some of you right now might be going through a spiritual awakening. And, you know, we all go through multiple spiritual awakenings during our lifetime. It's not like you just have one big bang. Um, but most of us do have a certain, um, idea or timeline of when we first start our awakening or, our, or as some people like to call it, our activations. Um, and in some ways they're two totally different things. I mean, you can be awakened and aware and then also be activated, which means you're coming into your gifts, but they all kind of fall into a sort of similar timeline um but this is the life force energy which also is the blood which runs through our veins um the serpent also represents a sacred sexuality so some of you are going to be activating um those aspects especially if you are with a divine partner this is about also purification so um, some of you are going through an, another spiritual rebirth, cleansing sort of all the old energies that are holding you back and coming into 
the energies of your gifts. Can we get two more cards, please, Spirit? The Eye of... of <clears throat> oh, what is that? The Eye of Hathor, I believe, is on there as well. So that's going to mean something for someone. Oh, look at that. We have Nephthys again. Number two, the High Priestess. Intuition and mystery. So again, heavy energy of integration, of combining your light and your dark, of your spiritual growth, of using your intuition. Your guys' third eye activations are going to be very, very strong. Some of you, they will be so strong that you will be experiencing lots of third eye pressure. It's going to be very intense. Um, you might want to do some crown chakra work and some third eye work before um, these uh, Capricorn full moons end because I feel like the pressure in your crown and your third eye is going to be very, very heavy and strong, especially those of you that are very sensitive to this type of energy. I've had a headache for the past two days. I actually had to cancel this morning. I had a client, well, it wasn't this morning, it was this afternoon, because I had a massive headache. And I didn't realize it, but now I'm starting to understand it was from this crown chakra and third eye activations that we are receiving right now from this full moon in Capricorn. Makes sense. Sorry about that. Take a water break. Okay. So that came out twice. So that means spirit wants us to pay attention to that energy because it's very important. I'm going to pull one more card. Can we get one more card, please? Anubis and spirit guides, source. Thank you for allowing this beautiful connection. We are so grateful for you. <clears throat> we are grateful for this guidance. All right, so we have neck bet mother mut mute i don't know how to say that m u t mut mute number 1 so we have number 1 here number 2 here and number 16 if you notice right here 6 and 1 is 7 again guys you probably can't see that i'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the camera there you go right here 6 and 1 7 so that's 7 again is that 7 twice already Okay, so this says alchemist, wisdom keeper, and grandmother. So again, we have the heavy energy of the mother energy. Um, Mary Magdalene, the great mother. This right here represents life force energy again. It represents literally life force energy. So that has come up twice as well. Okay. Um... We did have the energy that came out once already of alchemy. So learning to transmute negative emotions into positive emotions, learning to transmute heavier energies into um, lighter energies, right? And into lessons of wisdom, like this says here, the wisdom keeper, some of you are going to be learning a lot more about your gifts and your past lives, your Akashics. Okay, and I want to read a little bit about this card because that's pretty much all that came through for this. And I'm curious if anything else is going to come through when this with this book okay so it says she represents the wise old crone that's funny because i was gonna say this is the energy of death and rebirth because i was gonna say i think this is a vulture but then i doubted myself and i was like i'm not sure what this is it, it could be a vulture but i'm not quite sure and i just read right here it does say it's a blend of the two vulture goddesses, Mutt and Nekbet. So it is. 
It says, she must be approached with respect if you wish to gain permission to enter into these sacred mysteries. So she holds a lot of the sacred mysteries of life. It says, um, it's unwise to trifle with this goddess for she is a disciplined taskmaster who is task. Sorry. She is a disciplined taskmaster who assists the initiates in making the decision to engage fully with this process of transformation. Wow. So yes, she works with the energies of death and rebirth. Once you've committed to moving forward, her loving, watchful eye is always upon you to ensure safe passage through the portals of shamanic initiation that must be crossed during all transitions in life. So yes, transition meaning death or rebirth. Okay, so she is a master alchemist. Um, she's a strong guide and protector. She's also the one who holds the key to your DNA, DNA memory. That's crazy because remember I said something about you guys are going to have access to your Akashics. There it is. My intuition is spot on. It says right there, it holds the key to your DNA memory of how to enter the mysteries. If you pull this card, you are being alchemically activated by the sacred elders the wisdom keepers, so that you can begin to remember as you embark on a journey to reclaim your true self. Also, in the external world, a grandmother or some other elder or teacher may show up in your life to guide you. This could come in the form of a two-legged or a human, or it could be in a tree in an old growth forest one of the stone people, or an animal totem. They are all our elder brothers and sisters. Honor your guides with all your hearts. And that <clears throat> sort of made me feel a little bit emotional because both of my grandmothers are gone and have passed on. And my grandmother has, I, I think it's only been three or four years since my <clears throat> late grandmother passed. And it still feels very fresh sorry about background noise and I still miss her every single day and I feel her very heavy as one of my guides um lately and you know since she has transitioned and so that makes me feel in my heart of hearts that she's here and she's helping me <clears throat> to assist you guys in what you need to know and that just fills my heart with so much love and happiness so Lots of gratitude there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to know about my skulls. So this one is um, cinnamon. This one is pico de gallo. <laughs> this one is Jay Jolie. Named after a famous drag queen who I love from RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> and this one is Echo named after like um an ecosystem but you know i pronounce it echo but yes it's i got it from ecosystem so i guess you could call him eco but it's you know it's it's echo i call him echo so these are all males and this one is my only feminine skull so she told me that she was a female so i named her cinnamon and if you can see she has all this beautiful glitter in her she's so pretty i'm not sure what material she is because I received her from a friend um, Jan Sue if you're watching this she gave me this she gave me all four of these skulls she also gave me this um, I think it's called spirit stone it's absolutely gorgeous and this moonstone I bought myself this was a gift to remind me to breathe and to see beauty everywhere all right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this Capricorn Full Moon reading. Happy Capricorn Full Moon. I love you. If you guys want to purchase a reading with me, you can click in my description box below my videos, the little arrow, and it'll lead you to my website. There you can find my Patreon um, the link if you want to tip me if you enjoyed this reading. It helps me to 
um, continue to make videos because this is my only income. So any little um, tip I appreciate because it helps me to continue to make videos for you guys and to continue to assist the collective during this time. You can also find my Etsy shop there. And please check out my son's channel. He works really hard to create content for you guys as well. Um, I guess that's it. I love you. Bye.